Hello, Vincent Paracella, and this is my final project video submission for facts and myths of social media. Uh, the concept that uh, I decided to discuss in this project is social media and technology have affected the ability of young generations to adopt social skills and etiquette and cause relationship, interpersonal relationship problems. Um, I think this is a big issue with social media, and I think uh, three credible sources from this course would agree with me. Uh, Simon Sinek, in his TED Talk from the initial week of this class, uh, stated facts such as, kids don't know how to form meaningful relationships because they are constantly on their phones. And uh, they use social media to cope with stress uh, and it caught, and due to the dopamine release and the addictive factor of it. I think this is definitely true. Um, seeing kids today and young teenagers and even young adults, early 20s, they're, it seems like they're constantly on their phones, just nonstop, and they're just always looking at the screen. And, and I, I, this could be said for pretty much any generation these days. Uh, you know, you walk down the street and you see just people, they don't even really look up when they walk, and they're just walking and texting on their phones or doing whatever. And, and uh, it's definitely a trip to see it because it's not like it used to be where people would actually kind of be aware of their surroundings and, and, and it's just people are just so into their phones and technology these days and it can get dangerous. I mean, you hear stories about people on their phones and they're walking the street and get hit by a car or whatever. And, it, and it's just, it's kind of sad. Another source uh, that we discussed is uh, Sherry Turkles in her Ted talk connected, but alone. She describes the reality that people are constantly on their phones. As I mentioned, she makes a quote saying devices are so powerful they not only change what we do, but they change who we are. And I think that kind of plays into my concept that it's really affecting who we are as people and how we interact with other people. She mentions that uh, relationships are cleaned up with technology, stating that the lack of the interpersonal communication and the, uh, the digital communication, whether it's texting or social media or what have you, it's, it's, it, it doesn't give the real context of a relationship. It's just words on a screen. Um, and she also states, texts don't work to really understand each other, and people people treat pretend empathy as the real thing. And again, it's going back to what I mentioned before. Emotions aren't aren't projected in a correct way on a screen. They're not they're not projected how they truly are. You can put as many emojis as you want, exclamation points, sad faces, whatever. Um, when expressing empathy or sympathy or whatever, or any emotion, but it's really not that you're not really getting those facial expressions, the body movements, and, and really connecting with someone on a personal level. The, uh, the next source that I, I cited is Paul Fairfield in Prado's Chapter 7, Social Media in Your Brain. Um, Paul says a quote in his, Paul writes a quote in his, this chapter that I thought was pretty uh, meaningful to my concept. It states, Body language, facial expression, tone of voice, indirect communication, intimation, insinuation, double meaning, suggestibility, illusion, irony, subtlety, nuance, and even humor are lost on the screen. These matters are not so many bits of information, but meanings in a sense that no in a sense that can no more be reduced to words on a screen than a human being can be reduced to bare bones without the intervention of death. So he's basically saying that on the screen, you don't get those factors like body language, facial expression, tone of voice, indirect communication. You don't get those. You don't get those when you're texting or, or messaging or whatever. It's it's not the same as you would, as the experience you would have just interacting with somebody on a personal level and really getting to know them and know how they are and how they express certain things. You're losing out on a lot of that relationship quality, and uh, tone of voice says everything. You can't get a tone of voice on on a text message. You can't get facial expressions, you can't get those body languages. So I thought that was a pretty meaningful quote as far as my idea. Um, this consideration, how has it changed the way I view social media? Um, since social media became prevalent, I, I was already concerned as, as it started to grow that, that people, myself included, were already on our phones way too much. And uh, I, I thought it was definitely an issue and, and sometimes like, I'm guilty of going out to dinner or whatever, and 
just kind of being on my phone or being among friends being on my phone, but I think I kind of catch myself. I think it's just getting worse as time goes on and, and as technology advances. I think it's just getting, it's just technology and, and social media and our smartphones are just becoming so much more appealing and it's, it's definitely making it so we're glued to them more. I think um, the main part of the relationship aspect is definitely social media. You know, technology is one thing, texting is one thing, but social media is really what I think gives a false sense of relationship where people are constantly commenting on other people's, on other people's pictures or statements or tweeting. And, and a lot of times it's, it's, it's keyboard warrior arguments or it's compliments, but it, it's just not the same as people wouldn't. It's easier for people to give these compliments and it's easier for people to, to say these things because they're not direct with the person. It's so much easier to be behind a keyboard and just talk to somebody than it is to really reach out to them or even just call them on the phone. I, uh, I've experienced communication with, with younger generations, like in-person communication, uh, teens, young adults, and even some people in my own generation. And, and it definitely seems as though there's a lack of social skills and etiquette and really just a sense of kind of awkwardness. And I think this definitely has a lot to do with technology and the fact that we're on our phones more. Um, I understand and I recognize that there's definitely more factors that could go into that, you know, the way someone's raised or, or how they were socialized growing up. But I, I think that social media technology in general, just I think it's really affecting the way people are able to communicate with each other personally. And it's really affecting, you know, social etiquette. Uh, Sherry Turkle also mentioned in her TED talk that um, the fact that people, when they're not like in a biz business meeting, for example, they're just in any downtime, they're just on their phones, constantly on their phones. And even if they're on their phones talking to somebody else, it's they're not talking to people in real life. There's no, it's just an easy way to escape. You're, you you don't get put in that, those awkward situations where sometimes you have to talk to somebody. You can just immediately escape almost any situation of boredom or whatever by just getting on your phone and you're not, you know, it, it can cause issues when people aren't faced with real life drama or faced with confrontation in real life and with, with real people. And so I think it's definitely an issue. I like to think that hopefully the, this will change and people will start to realize that, that there's a benefit to being off your phone and, and experiencing life and experiencing other people. But, um, as of now, it seems like it's just getting worse and, and uh, so I try to be positive about it, but I know that I need to work on it, and uh, I hope it does change eventually. This was a great class, and I appreciate working with you all. Thank you.